Hello and welcome to this week's IG Live. I am excited to be doing the final interview in our uh, Hispanic Heritage Month series. We've had a wonderful group of interviews and this one is going to be just as great. We're gonna be talking to Claudia Davila who is an author and an illustrator. And the theme for our interviews for this Hispanic Heritage Month is all about climate change. So although she has a lot of different books we can talk about, we're gonna be focusing on ones that she does that are um, they're talking about kids getting involved in climate change and learning to make a difference. So um, again, we're here every week, usually at two o'clock Eastern, although watch for announcements. Uh, we try to accommodate our guests, so sometimes we have somebody that can't get on at that time. And so make sure you watch for the announcements. We try to make that. But that's every Thursday that we get on with you and have interviews with the movers and the shakers in the world of diverse children's literature. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to help you celebrate, you know, Latin and Heritage Month and uh, talk about children's books. Well, we are excited to have you here and why don't we jump right in and you can introduce yourself and tell us what was your journey to becoming an author and an illustrator? Great. So my name is Claudia Davila and I live in Toronto, Canada, um, but was born in Chile. And um, so I'm a Chilean Canadian and I write and illustrate children's books and um, including what we're going to talk about today, which is Luz Sees the Light and Luz Makes a Splash. These were my first graphic novels. Um, so, I mean, I always loved illustrating as a child. I loved making art. That's the common story, correct? <laughs> and, um, and I loved uh, stories. And I think in the back of my mind, I always wished that I could make children's books, but it just didn't seem like a possibility for some reason. Um, but I, I did want to go into art. So I studied fine art at York University uh, and then quickly realized that it's kind of hard to make a living doing fine art. So I went into graphic design, which is how I ended up at uh, OWL magazine and eventually became the art director of Chirp and Chickadee magazines, which are the younger magazines of OWL. And um, part of that job was to draw little spot illustrations to make uh, little pieces of text look more interesting. And I would do that with every issue. And I loved it so much that I realized I could probably do more of this and get paid for it. Um, but the real clincher was that um, the magazines shared an office with Owl Kids Book. And I realized there what the children's book making process was like. So I saw art directors work with illustrators and writers and printers and and it just had me so pretty soon I quit my full-time office job at the magazine and went freelance and that's how I first started uh, working on children's books. I love it and I mean what an experience to have I know you've talked about what a magical community it is uh, this world of creators um, that's out there but I, I also think it's interesting that you took kind of a winding path, mm -hmm. like you said, mm -hmm. to, to, to what you're doing currently, partly because you didn't really know that this was a job or didn't really see yeah. it as something that people were doing about writing books and illustrating, which kind of emphasizes the importance of having, well, of making authors and illustrators more accessible, but especially representation. Why is that so important for kids to see diverse authors and illustrators? Um, you mean like if they ever want to become creators themselves or in general? Just in general, I think. Yeah. Oh, well, for sure. I think it's um, especially kids who come from uh, different communities than, uh, than their country is historically um, would probably, especially these days, feel a, a real sense of, of being seen or of safety or of being understood in uh, a community that's outside of their own. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I feel that in the last 10 years or so, there has been a, a huge influx of books that features um, kids who would come, who come from cultures and backgrounds that haven't historically been represented in children's literature. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, people of Islamic backgrounds, um, Hispanic, 
uh, you know, from all different parts of the world and all religions, even all abilities uh, and, you know, um, with mental health or physical conditions, like it, there's such a huge variety of representation now that I think um, it really, uh, I think it, it helps to get rid of the isolation uh, that might usually be felt from these kids. Right, mm -hmm. definitely. And um, I, I love also that you have a background as an author and an illustrator. And um, mm -hmm. often you are illustrating other people's books, working closely with the authors. Mm -hmm. And and you also uh, illustrate your own books that, that you've written. What is that mm -hmm. process like? Um, and how do they kind of influence each other? Meaning like when you're working with an, another author and then when you're working by yourself doing the author, um, doing the writing and the illustrating. Yeah, well, it, it's... um. It's pretty different because, uh, I mean, if I have my own story that I want to turn into a book, it's an enormously long process. So from getting the idea to trying to uh, bring it down onto paper into a cohesive story and hammering it out and writing, rewriting, getting it, uh, finding a publisher, then going through edits can take sometimes a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, so it's extremely rewarding because you're so immersed in it and then you get to illustrate your own uh, concepts and characters that you've, you know, uh, invented. Um, so it's, that feels like, you know, making a family member or, or something. It's very, very personal. Um, but then when, um, when I illustrate another author's story, you know, most of that front work isn't even there. So it's kind of, fun to receive a, uh, you know, a, a manuscript from a publisher saying, hey, are you interested in illustrating this story? And I get to just immediately just be flooded with, um, you know, ideas and uh, inspiration for how this, how these characters can be depicted and, you know, what kinds of scenery. So it's almost like um, it, it's pure creativity visually rather than like too much of the structural work of the story so but also for me illustrating comes easier than writing because that's what I've been doing the longest and I've illustrated about 33 books by now but have written three so <laughs> so I've had uh, I'm a, a lot more comfortable illustrating as well than writing. What made you decide um, like you said you started out more as an illustrator mm -hmm. what what um made you make the leap to saying, okay, I want to write my own stories as well? You know, it, it was reading so many kids' books in my work and illustrating so many uh, books that other people had written was inspiring to me to see that I could do it. And the, the kinds of ideas that these authors have had that they turned into stories, I could do the same thing because um, I, I was very passionate, especially when I first started with Book one, um, it's most people out there don't know who Luce is or what this book is about, but uh, it, it's a, an environmental activism book. And I really wanted at the time to add uh, these kinds of stories to kids' libraries that didn't really exist. So um, these books are from 15 years ago. And at the time, like I say, there was there was sort of a lack of this kind of storytelling and even graphic novels were just beginning to get accepted so it was i i really wanted to to get that out there well let's talk about those like i said you have done so many books you've illustrated so many and and written your own but since we are kind of having the theme of climate change to focus on those two um tell us a little bit more about about the story and what you what you want people to take away from it? I know you said it was inspired by your own deep love of nature and kind of fascination with how people interact with it. So, what do you hope that kids take away from reading the books? Um, well, like I say, I think most people don't know what the books are about, so I'll have to describe them just briefly. Sure. So, in um, in Lucy's the light, uh, this girl Luce, uh, which by the way is the Spanish version of Lucy, um, is is kind of a play on the fact that she ha she has a realization she sees the light that her um, her world of you know driving everywhere consumerism eating 
you know, her favorite snacks that are imported from other parts of the world um, is a lifestyle that is slowly starting to fall apart. And um, because uh, there are power outages in this, you know, supposed near future in the book, um, uh, gas prices are so high, food prices are going up, it's becoming unsustainable. Um, and remember, this was written 15 years ago, so everything that I wrote is actually happening now. I but we're like we're in that near future now. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We totally are. Um, so, and in the end, she realizes through a variety of, of you know, things that uh, the answer lies in community, in organizing with community, in becoming resilient and self-sufficient, and um, and relying more on each other and on producing their own stuff. So. Uh, in that case, I would want readers to take away from that that um, from that kind of story that uh, uh, even if there can be a crisis that feels overwhelming, or um, or even like in her in Luce's case, she didn't realize that she was kind of part of the problem. But at the same time, uh, it's just life. She's just one of millions of people who are behaving the same way. So there's a lot of uh, of, of Eco guilt and eco anxiety that that people are feeling, but this kind of story can kind of inspire anyone to just say, you know, I don't I don't have to do things the way I've always done them, and I can actually talk with my friends, my family, my community, and make changes. I love it, and I love that the books that, like you said, they go beyond just realizing the problem to really taking action. And in the book, she has to come over her own internal. Um, things that hold her back internally, also mm -hmm. externally with like with her friends. And so I really uh, love how you emphasize like this determination and persistence. And what do you hope that kids, um, what kind of lessons are you hoping they learn about persistence, especially in terms of making making change and making a difference in the world? Um, well, I, I hope that, uh, I hope that readers see themselves in the characters in the book. Uh, and then get a sense of how they react to crises and, and confrontations and, and difficulties, and then maybe see see those reflected in their own lives. Like when what I love about books is that there's such an intimate experience for readers. So you you know a reader will take a book and quietly sit somewhere and just immerse themselves in the story and and really become the main character because you're living their life, you're hearing their thoughts, you're seeing their reactions, you're experiencing their feelings. So if a reader is, is experiencing everything that this character is going through, but then sees how, how they come out of it on the other side, and how, yeah, right? And then how they, how they uh, can, can deal with their struggles, then, and then the outcome mm -hmm. is imperfect, but positive positive then then they can maybe later when they put the book down and they go on with their own lives maybe some of that can kind of be internalized so that when they're confronted with with these issues they can sort of feel like well this is how i can react to this or or have a little bit of strength or or, or um you know thoughtfulness about how they respond to things i love that I, that they're like you said, they're taking on the kind of the thoughts and experiences of the character. Maybe they can take on some of that strength too. Um, yeah. And I love that you also talk about how your stories encourage children to be strong, thoughtful, compassionate, and responsible people. So how do your books do that? And you can feel free to talk about it if you want to talk about some of your other books as well. And more generally, what role do books have? I mean, you've already kind of touched on this, but what role can books play and helping raise up this next generation? Well, I mean, I feel like this next generation is already so amazing. It's like, they're just an incredible, uh, it's an incredible era for these kids. I haven't, I have kids who go to school, one is in grade school, one is in high school. So I can kind of see what they and their peers are like. And there is such a strength of character that I don't, remember from when I was younger. I mean, um, and I, it could be because children's rights are being championed so much. Mm -hmm. um, children's needs are being um, really 
really advocated for in the school system and in, in communities and cities and families. Um, so I think they're they're already in a in a great place. But um, but to get get back to your question of like how 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 can the stories help them be a little be more thoughtful, compassionate kids? Um, I think by seeing stories that are, for instance, my I'm gonna just touch on my second graphic novel, Loose Makes a Splash, which is about water rights and water issues and drought and climate change. Um, and uh, in this case, there's a lot of references to um, of, of human rights abuses of water issues around the world, privatizing water, contaminating water, um, corporations draining water from, uh, you know, from reservoirs that decimate communities. And um, so these are issues that are still relevant today that, um, especially with climate change, being very at the forefront with, you know, thank to so much hard work from Greta Thunberg and all the people who she has inspired. Um, I, I would hope that stories like this would sort of make, make these huge problems, um, first of all, reflect them and, and say, yes, they exist. These problems are happening, but they're, they're kind of tangible, especially when you break it all down to what does one girl think about all this? Mm -hmm. And how does she deal with it? And and to bring it down to the microcosm of what can your community do to fix this issue? And in their case, their town is going through a drought, and um, there's water restrictions, etc. So throughout the story, she learns about gray water filtration and um, conservation and um, rainwater catchment systems. So the the book will describe all these tools and skills of how you can tackle a particular issue that is made worse by climate change. So um, yeah, so I hope that my, my stories not only uh, inspire kids to feel less hopeless mm -hmm. and overwhelmed by the issues that are out there, but in the end feel like there's a toolkit out there of, okay, I want to do something about this. The, here are some things that I saw that were done in the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that's one of the beauties of fiction versus nonfiction, because like you said, mm -hmm. you, it, there's so much information that you're giving them, but it's also breaking it down to the individual level that they could see themselves doing what Luce is doing or doing what her community is doing. Because mm -hmm. you're right, I think a lot of times um, kids have a lot more clarity on these issues than I think, I know at least um, my peers and I did when I was mm -hmm. their age. Yeah. You know, they're a lot more aware about about it and it's more of a crisis also but but mm -hmm. so it can be very overwhelming and make them feel like what can we do so i love that you have this book that's really showing here's what one girl does and here's what yeah. you can do to do that yeah yeah and with lots of humor lots of slapstick you know lots of um uh just keeping it light mm -hmm. and fun at the same time because i mean it's it's great to have um nonfiction, I mean, fiction that is um, a little heavier, a little more, you know, real and deals with issues that are quite heavy and terrifying, but um, but it's good to have a balance, especially for a variety of age groups, right? So the younger kids may not feel quite ready to, to, to you know, really delve in the shadow side of eco-anxiety, for example. Um, but here, especially for younger kids, like my son is seven, and reading reading this book, he sees potential and he sees humor and comedy and remembers the funny stuff while also remembering the very practical stuff. That, and I think that's important. Is that hard to do to find that balance of giving them all this information without making it feel too heavy? Right. Um, it's it's a bit of it's a bit of a balance, but the truth is, I try to start with funny. I try to start with mm -hmm. like you know fun characters, uh, uh, you know um, a relatable situation, 
information, a story that you want to read, and then I slowly bring in the mm -hmm. issues rather mm -hmm. than the other way around, which is this is a book about issues, and then I'm just going to, you know, flip in some comedy here and there. Then that, <laughs> that just feels sort of forced and, and wouldn't really hit the mark. So the other way around. But at the same time, stories that are like pure comedy or, you know, just cartoons with, with no depth, um, that's just entertainment. And for me, I, I'm not, not interested in book creating books that, that are pure entertainment because, you know, there's so many resources that go into creating a book that I, I really want it to be an agent of, of, of inspiration and change um, mm -hmm. than just, you know, fodder for, for entertainment. Right. Well, can you tell us some about what are you working on now? Um, well, I'm I'm working on a uh, another book for Kids Can Press. So these were published by Kids Can Press, and I actually just uh, launched another graphic novel I did with Kids Can Press, Thunderboom, that was written by Jack Brilio, and um, this is about a, a nonverbal boy who. Gets through, gets over his own fears by by harnessing his imagination as a superhero mm -hmm. to get through all of his terrifying experiences. Um, but now I'm working on a, on another graphic novel, also written by a different uh, author for Kids Can Press. But um, I'm also in the process of writing my own story that is uh, also in the lines of the loose books that are about kids taking action in their community for um, gen rel general climate uh, issues, but a slightly older age group, so more middle school. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what age group would you say the loose books are for? Well, it's for, um, I think, you know, <laughs> I don't exactly remember what age group it was meant for, but I would say, I would say around um, six to 10, mm. sort of. And then the book that I'm um, that that I'm writing for now would be maybe ten to thirteen. -ish, so. Well, we can't wait to see that. And when we when when it's out, we'll make sure to share it in our stories. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. This has been an absolute pleasure, and um, I hope to chat with you again. Yes, and for everybody watching, thank you for joining us. This will be up in a few minutes on our Instagram, and then later on our YouTube channel. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye.